my question would be, as somebody who's who's accredited, and you've mentioned their best best practice, right? So I kind of pride myself on having zero experience in sales and marketing to do what I do because it allows me to think outside the box. And I love thinking outside the box and not being constrained by what best practice is. Do you feel like having that amazing knowledge and of the best practices, do you think that sometimes allows you to kind of put that to one side and go against best practice on occasion with where you feel like that's the right thing to do for your clients? Or do you think that, that is it a case that best practice is just a kind of like the, the framework that you sit on the top of things? I think best practice is all about the frameworks um, because the, the, the frameworks that I use, you know, all the classic ones, they're designed to be completely agnostic. And I think really where a lot of businesses get things wrong is they don't apply these frameworks as part of the strategic planning process. And, uh, uh, you know, there's a famous saying, there's no use rowing harder if you're rowing in the wrong direction. So what, what these frameworks do is they, they kind of give you, they force you to think harder about your business, your customers, the competitors, the marketplace. And I, and I think being forced to think harder and deeper using the frameworks, using best practice, um, just gives you a much better understanding of what's driving your competitive advantage in your company, where the real opportunities lie in the market and how to prioritize all of those choices that you have. Because the thing is with limited resources and budget and human resource, you can't do everything all the time. You have to make choices. So I, th I think what, what my approach to marketing really is using the, the, the frameworks, doing a, a deep dive analysis research of the market, understanding what the root cause analysis is of all your drivers of competitive advantage, what your choices are. And then when it comes to, I guess, once you've decided on your strategy and your direction of travel, that's where you can have a bit more fun. That's where you can actually be a bit more adventurous and do things differently to your competitors. So whether it's whatever your tactics may be, if it's websites, your brands, the way you deliver your service, that's where you can start having some fun. So, so that's really how I look at that. And, and I, I think another thing that companies are often guilty of is that they'll look at their competitors and copy them. They'll look at their competitor and say, oh, competitor X is doing that. Why aren't we doing it? We're going to do that now. And that's kind of a dumb thing to do because it's completely different. It's, it's like comparing apples and pears. So I, I think really, you know, you be inspired by what's what's good, be inspired by best practice, but make it fit your context. Some great advice there, some great advice. And I think if you boil a lot of that back, it probably comes back to understanding the data um, at, at the top end of that funnel and understanding. Now, I think there's a lot of business owners out there who do truly believe and, and are probably only about 70% of the way through it that they understand their ideal clients. I, I was guilty of this. You know, I've been in business 14, 15 months and I thought when I came out of the business I was in, I was looking for more businesses like that. And I'm still adamant that it does, but they're not my ideal clients. So again, just because they're qualified doesn't mean that they're a good fit. And it's about understanding, you know, the nuances between lots of different things. And then even in, even then understanding who are my ideal partners and, and why there are my ideal partners, lots of different things.